So what is a shaky shiver and what does it have to do with this horror film? Well, let's talk about it now. It's David Stark from Watcher Pass. I'm here to talk to you about Shaky Shivers, which comes to theaters on September 21st, 2023. It is a new indie kind of light horror comedy film from director Sun Kang. You know him from the Fast and Furious franchise. Well, now he's getting behind the uh, the camera. He's getting behind the director's seat. He is making an indie horror comedy film called Shaky Shivers. Now, what is a Shaky Shiver? Well, you find out in the film. There is an ice cream stand that the two main characters work at, and one of them invents this drink called a shaky shiver. It is like a chocolatey kind of milkshake, I guess. They never tell you what's in it, so I don't know. I had to make my own, and what better way to start this review than with a little bit of shaky shiver? All right, let's get going. So like I said, this is an indie film. This is an indie horror comedy directed by Sun Kang. My hot take is, look, I think you should pass on it. I like the idea. I like the style. It has a bright kind of fun look to it i liked a lot of the characters but unfortunately it is a horror comedy and i didn't really like the humor that much i didn't really find it that funny and there weren't that many horror elements in it either so overall i think you should pass on it but i'm going to tell you a little bit more about the film a few things i liked a few things i didn't like and then really quickly go into the ending so as you can imagine there will be spoilers in the ending section if you don't want to know what happens in this movie i would turn off when i get there before that i'll keep it vague i'll keep it spoiler free and i'll let you know when i get to those spoilers so, like I said, Shaky Shivers follows two main characters, Lucy and Karen. They work at this, like, ice cream shop in the woods in Washington in 1993. They're kids. They're both, you know, like, not super serious about this. But, you know, they're doing a fine job. Well, their boss decides to leave them in charge for a little bit. And wouldn't you know it, when he leaves them in charge, some craziness starts to happen. Some things start to happen. And it might involve werewolves and shaky shivers. So things I liked about this movie. The first, like I said, I like the style. It has a really nice kind of like bright style to it. A lot of the film takes place during the day, which is always fun in a horror movie. If they can do sunshine and bright colors in a horror film. And overall, it really emphasizes the comedy part of the horror comedy. It definitely doesn't take itself too seriously. And that style definitely shows that. The second thing I like, look, I like the practical effects. When they used practical effects, they were pretty good. There was some nice blood. There was some nice uh, makeup effects for some of the things that happened. There's some pretty impressive makeup effects later on, especially for an indie film. I really liked when it kind of stuck with that practical side of things. It doesn't do it all the time, but when it does do practical, I really liked it a lot. And the last thing I love, look, I like the characters. There are some fun characters. Not a big cast, but each of them are very different, very unique. Lucy is a, little, a lot of fun. She's a little bit out there. Lucy and Karen's dynamic is fun to see. And they are joined by a host of other interesting characters. They're all very unique, and each of them gives this ice cream milkshake based horror film a little bit of flavor. And I really like how all the actors gave them their all and really kind of put themselves out there for these roles. So, all that being said, things I didn't love as much. The first, it's just not that funny to me. I didn't find the jokes that funny. Look, maybe it's just my age. Maybe it's just I'm not in the same mindset, but. I didn't find myself laughing very much. And I know that the writing tried. There were definitely jokes in there. They just weren't hitting for me. So for me, I just didn't find it very funny, which is not good in a horror comedy. The second thing I didn't love as much, not good on the horror side, it has some not great effects. There's not a ton, but there are some instances where it seems like they use CG or weird, uh, like, film tricks to try to make things happen. There's one where, like, a character backs up and it looks like they just kind of reversed the film really quickly maybe that was because maybe that was by design i mean it kind of looked a little bit like the bram stoker's dracula thing where they go back so maybe that was by design it didn't look that great there's also some cg used in some of the i guess more magical effects that happened that didn't look that great either and one of the the iconic shaky shiver usually is is real but i think later on there was one prop where it was actually a prop and it looked like a prop it was a little disappointing because that is kind of the main namesake of this film i want it to be real all the time and the third thing i didn't love as much it's a fairly slow story it doesn't it kind of follows lucy and karen as they go about this crazy kind of night and these all this stuff that happens to them but it doesn't progress very quickly it doesn't really feel like there is a sense of urgency through most of it that is partly their characters their characters are a little are a little bit lackadaisical but overall it just doesn't really keep your attention going and it's a fairly short film it's like 80 minutes long and so for a short film to kind of like not keep your attention, it's not a really great sign. And the last thing I didn't love as much, there's not really great horror. It's not really scary. I don't think it's meant to be scary, but it is a horror comedy. And the, and the comedy side, I didn't find that funny. 
which means the horror side would hopefully elevate that up. It doesn't. It's not a very scary movie. It, like, it's, a, it's a charming indie horror comedy film, but overall, I don't think it hits either of those notes. So, Jakey Shivers is coming to theaters on September 21st, 2023. If you do check it out, let me know what you thought. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you liked, what you didn't like, and what I got right and wrong. I'm going to go really quickly into the ending now. So, if you don't want to know what happens in this movie, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. So, like I said, I already revealed. I guess maybe that's a spoiler. I already revealed what a shaky shiver is. It is just like a uh, like a chocolate milkshake. So uh, there you go. Now you have the main mystery of the film. But the big, big mystery in this movie is, is Lucy going to become a werewolf? They have this strange interaction with this person, this like witch of the forest. She comes into the ice cream stand wanting to like exchange this really, really nice pine cone for some ice cream. Probably not the best trade, but when they say no, she curses Lucy and like uses a hand puppet that like bites her arm and she casts a spell that will turn Lucy into like a dark wolf. Okay, not great, but very strange interaction. Lucy is bloody. She is worried that she's going to turn into a werewolf. So Lucy and Karen prepare. They go into their car at night. They try to like lock Lucy in there so she can't hurt anything. And and they also get a gun with some silver bullets just in case. Well, unfortunately for them, one of their friends, Eric, who Lucy and Eric kind of have a thing going on. It's kind of implied, but it seems like they're an item, except not really in public. Well, Chad decides to go give them a scare. So he dressed up as a werewolf and goes, ah, and Karen being on edge with a gun, unfortunately ends up shooting him in the face. Not good. And this is further compounded by the fact that uh, Lucy then turns into a werewolf and you don't really know what happens. And Lucy wakes up in the middle of the camp naked and with her hand handcuffed to the steering wheel that she pulled off somehow. So not a really great situation for her. We don't know what happens to Karen, but overall, not a great night for anyone involved. Now, we find out that Karen's fine. Lucy didn't end up killing her, but they try to figure out what to do. They try to figure out how to reverse this spell. They try to do a few things to save Lucy from this curse. First, they think, you know, maybe her blood is bad. Maybe they need to, like, change out her blood. So they get Eric's dead blood, try to switch it in with Lucy's. That doesn't work. Lucy vomits. Then Karen also had a boyfriend who was, like, a big nerd. Um, he had, like, a binder of Dungeons & Dragons spells, and so they start using these, and they turn out to be real spells. They try to cast a spell to reverse the werewolfism, but unfortunately for them, they turn Eric into a zombie. And this is actually had a pretty decent uh, makeup for the zombie. It was a little over the top. I liked it. Like the, the faces were like really full of teeth and uh, like the hands all of a sudden for some reason became very mossy. But it was pretty it was a pretty good makeup and pretty good for an indie film. Now, Eric unfortunately starts attacking them. Karen doesn't know what to do. She grabs the steering wheel that Lucy had on her wrist and just starts beating Eric down. Now, Unfortunately, Lucy gets scratched during this and she then turns into a zombie. Now, this leads to a very slow speed chase between Karen, who's shambling, and Lucy, who is like pirouetting away, dancing, trying to like stay one step ahead of her, but really easily doing it because uh, Karen is going very slow. Eventually, Lucy's able to find that book, find that magical book, cast a spell to reverse the zombieism. Everything seems fine, right? Well, not really. They go back to the barn to try to ca finally cast a spell to reverse the werewolfism on Lucy. I don't know why they don't just do it where they are, but they want to go back to the barn. When they're there, they get captured. And it turns out that their boss, the owner of the Frosty Freeze, the ice cream shop that they work at, was out hunting Bigfoot. Apparently, his late wife was really into Bigfoot, and he wants to find this thing. He's been tracking Bigfoot for years and years, and he left the Frosty Freeze to go and like hunt in the woods playing these Bigfoot recordings to try to lure it out. That's why there's all these strange noises during the during the day. And he inadvertently catches Lucy and Karen. While they explain the situation to him, they explain this strange, like, forest witch that wanted ice cream and then cursed them. And he remembers that that witch came to his shop years and years ago, and she tried to trade him a pine cone for the ice cream. He gave her the ice cream anyways. She blessed him with good fortune. And wouldn't you know it, right after that, his soon-to-be wife, now kind of late wife, walked into the store. So it was a really great experience for him. Not so great for Lucy and Karen. So now that they're all together, they decide to cast a spell when Lucy starts to turn into a werewolf and she starts transforming. It's actually some pretty impressive makeup again for an indie film. Uh, she like, her claws come out, the like muscles, like the werewolf muscles come out. Her face turns into like a wolf form. 
But then they cast a spell and it's all fine. It seems a little bit like a cop out. Like there was this really big buildup for the werewolf side and they could have just cast a spell very quickly to end it all. Well, so you think everything is good, right? They overcame the spell. Everything is fine. Well, not really. When Lucy goes in the woods to go to the bathroom, she sees these, these like people in white robes with like deer skulls over their heads. They're all walking towards them and they're like, no. And, and Lucy's like, no, 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 we got to go. They all try to get in the car. The car doesn't start for various reasons. They finally get the car moving. They start going away. And that's when they get stopped by the Witch of the Forest. And she get, she kind of gets mad at uh, the owner for some reason. I don't really know why. She complains that like she gave him the love of his life. And there's there's a confrontation here, but it's weird because you would think that she would remember how kind he was and just like let him go. But no, no, no. She starts to attack him. She like casts a spell to turn both of the girls, both Lucy and Karen, into zombies that go and are getting ready to attack the owner. But that is when, wouldn't you know it, the witch looks up and there and there she sees Bigfoot. Bigfoot knocks her down, steps on her face, kills her for some reason. Why not? And that reverses the zombie spell on both uh, Karen and Lucy and ends the night. All the white robed deer people, which they never explain where they come from. They all start going back into the forest. And... I guess all is well that ends well. But after all this, Bob, the owner of the Frosty Freeze, says that he's going to like leave for good, and he gives Karen the Frosty Freeze, like he gives her his business, like that. That's crazy. They, these kids have been working for not very long, and they now get a business. I mean, good on them, I guess. But he gives her the business. He decides to go, and I guess I don't know, hunt Bigfoot some more or something. And after they leave, this cheap lady whose name is Karen too, in the credits who showed up at the start and got in a fight with uh, Karen and Lucy over this expired coupon, comes back in, and this time Karen decides to turn the other cheek. The, the lady's rude to her. She gives her a shaky shiver. That lady likes it. She, you know, smiles, wishes them a good day, and then leaves. So, I don't know, I guess maybe she earned a customer. She seems to just be giving this person free ice cream. I hope that there's a payoff at some point. So after she leaves... Karen and Lucy talk about some of the stuff that happened and they pull out this like one page of the spell book. All the other spells are gone, but there's this one page left and they're looking at it and the front, the front, I think it has like the zombieism spell, some spells that aren't applicable. And Karen's like, I'll turn it over. And she turns it over and you don't find out what the spell is. I wish you would knew what the spell is, but you don't find it out. The next scene, maybe it's a spell to like find the love of your life because the next scene Karen's ex-boyfriend Roger comes in. Roger's being played by Sun Kang. He tries. It's not very funny though, but he is definitely trying. And there's a quick conversation with them. You can tell it's him because he like rolls some Dungeons and Dragons dice before they get there. He like said he says he's on a quest and he's got to find the love of his life. And so he came back to see Karen. He, she doesn't leave with him. She kind of like tells him to get going. It's okay. And that's the movie. There is a stinger. You see Karen and Lucy at the counter of the ice cream. A giant Bigfoot hand places a coupon on the counter. Both Karen and Lucy look up and presumably Bigfoot is there for some free ice cream. It seems like everyone wants to get free ice cream at this place. I don't know how it stays in business, but they look up and that's the movie. That's the end of it. You never find out what a shaky shiver is. You never find out what that spell they cast is. There's a few unanswered questions, but overall, I just didn't love this movie as much as I thought I would. I really thought I would enjoy it. I like kind of horror comedies i liked the like camp style of it but i just didn't really find this movie that enjoyable so let me know what you think it comes to theaters on september 21st 2023 so if you check it out let me know your thoughts let me know what i got right let me know what i got wrong and uh, thanks so much for watching if you liked this review please like and subscribe to this channel it helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you thank you mm -hmm.